Hi guys and girls, Dave back with another video and today I'm here with the MSI Meg Aegis TI5 gaming PC. Retailing at £4,299, let's dig in and see what we get for our money. So let's start with some specifications. This flagship model comes with the Intel Core i9 10900K, has a custom Intel Z490 motherboard, has 128 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at 2933 megahertz. The GPU is the MSI Ventus 3X OC RTX 3080. SSDs, it comes with two one terabyte Western Digital SN550s, that's in RAID 0. Has a three terabyte Toshiba hard drive running at 7200 RPM. Wi-Fi is the Intel AX201. Power supply is a 750 watt 80 plus gold unit. Cooling is the MSI Mag Core Liquid 240R. Comes with a copy of Windows 10 Home 64 bit. Dimensions 551 by 240 by 511 millimeters or 21.6 by 9.45 by 20.1 inches and it weighs in at 15 kilos or 33 pounds. Let's start with a look at the packaging materials and there's no doubt it's well packaged. A box in a box in a box implementing those TV style plastic clips to attach them all together. Inside that the TI5 itself is housed in a foam exoskeleton for added shipping protection. Removing it from the box, we find it sitting inside a good quality cloth bag for scratch protection. Removing an additional smaller box and opening that up, we are greeted with a product documentation, a bag of additional screws for mounting two additional 2.5 inch hard drives or SSDs, and two additional SATA cables. The included power lead terminating with a kettle or C13 adapter. And finally, a small card envelope is found revealing the plush MSI branded cleaning cloth needed to keep the plastics free of dust. Onto the TI5 itself then, and what a sight to behold. Objectively, let's agree it has a striking, futuristic, robotic appearance, using a colour mix of gunmetal grey and black throughout, as well as RGB accenting. Much the same with previous models like the TI3 PC, for example. Though this is the first time an ages gaming desktop has been featured on the channel, subjectively, you'll love or hate how it looks. Let's take a good look around the case from the top down. The top panel is a plastic cover with a clear acrylic panel revealing a shot of the upside down GPU placement. It's positioned like this as the case itself houses the components inverted. This way it slots directly into the motherboard, removing the need for a ribbon cable. Take note too of the amount of RGB lighting it's covered with. Towards the back there is a large metal handle with the MSI Gaming logo stamped into it, the only branding you'll find anywhere on the case. The left side panel covers what MSI have called the VRM chamber. This side panel is a plastic cover mounted onto a metal cover which connects to the chassis. This plastic cover also contains a visible LED strip. Inside the VRM chamber is a fan placed on a custom made bracket on the rear of the CPU housing providing VRM cooling. This is also where you'll find the aforementioned two 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD mounting plates. So adding another pair of drives is easily done. Above that is the LED controller which controls the RGB lighting throughout the case. The eagle eyed of you would have noticed a spare M.2 slot above the fan too, highlighting another upgrade path for NVMe storage. The right panel is much like the left, a plastic cover mounted to a metal plate. Again, this also has an LED strip. Removing this cover reveals the Mag Core Liquid 240R radiator. We'll remove this and take a look inside shortly. Just above the right and left side panels are a pair of hidden headset hangers. I initially thought they housed the Wi-Fi antennas, but alas, they are exclusively for headphone hanging duties. Taking a look at the front panel, and again we see the LED strips hidden behind the plastic cover. It's nice to see they stretch almost the length of the entire panel too. I think it's safe to say the main focus point, however, is the large dial on the front of the case. So let's take a more in-depth look at what it does. MSI are calling this the gaming dial, and giving it a press puts the dancing Lucky the Dragon to sleep for a little while. The dial itself is an LED display, much like the ones found on newer AIO CPU caller blocks. So what's on offer? Monitor mode, which displays the CPU frequency, CPU usage, CPU temp, CPU fan speed, pump speed, RAM frequency, GPU clock speed, GPU usage, GPU temp, GPU fan speed, and randomly, the weather. Volume adjustment, which is a pretty obvious turn right for volume up and turn left for volume down. User scenario, with modes including none, extreme, balanced, silent, creator mode, and custom. And these modes switch on fan profiles in the Dragon Center software based on the task you're wanting to use the TI5 for. Music switch, which has a play and pause toggle, as well as next and previous track options. 
Mystic Light, which includes default, steady, breathing, flashing, and off modes. And of course, more options can be added and configured to the dial by, again, heading over to the Dragon Center software and making configuration changes there, including changing the display to an image of your choosing. Continuing on down to the bottom of the case, and we see the rounded, cylinder-shaped cover where we find the 750 watt power supply. Each side of the cylinder ring has an RGB ring light going most of the way round. The underside has ventilation cutouts for airflow. Overall, you find it hard to find a tower with this much prominent RGB included as standard. Finally, the feet at the bottom are solid metal with rubber pads to grip the tabletops. Taking a look at the rear then, we mentioned the power supply at the bottom of the case. Moving up slightly, we see a plastic cover held in place with a single Phillips head screw. Removing this cover reveals the location of the included 3TB Toshiba hard drive. It's easily removable using tallest sleds and slides in and out with ease. Onto the rear panel itself, we can see the only exhaust fan on the case and it's a brushless DC 120mm cooling fan. Next to that is the rear I.O. and we have, from bottom to top, two USB 2s, PS2 combo port, HDMI out, cover with a blanking plate, Thunderbolt 3, 3 USB 3.2 Gen 2s, 1 USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C, 1 Gigabit Ethernet port, 1 2.5 Gigabit Ethernet port, and 7.1 channel sound with an SP diff out port. While we're on the subject of I.O., the top panel is where you'll find the power button, 2 USB 3.2 Gen 2s, 1 USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C, and 3.5mm headphone and microphone jacks. Back to the rear panel and above the I.O. is the outputs for the included NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ventus 3X OC GPU. These include three DisplayPort 1.4s and a single HDMI 2.1 adapter. Let's take a peek inside the case then. It's great to see a distinct lack of warranty void if removed stickers here, indicating that MSI are happy for you to take a look inside the PC to add and remove components as you see fit. Removing the right side panel, we can see the 240mm AIO. Again, this is the MAG Core Liquid 240R. This is held in place with a nifty bracket that is easily removable to reveal the innards of the PC. The top chamber is housing the RTX 3080 once again, and below that we have access to the RAM slots, AX201 Wi-Fi card, CPU mounting plate, and one of the two NVMe SSDs. The second is hidden away under the GPU, so removing that will give you access to the drive. The good news here is that everything is easily removable for replacement should an upgrade or failure happen. Well that wraps up our look around the case, so let's get on to some performance testing. So overall, the Aegis T05 gets a big thumbs up from me for its gaming performance. In fact, unsurprisingly, it's the most powerful system we've tested to date on the channel. As usual, I've included links to PC Mark and 3D Mark testing in the description below, so please check out those scores and let me know how your PC compares. Talking performance, it's super satisfying to see it chew through all the game tests I threw at it. Usually there's a trade-off for such good performance, and that's in the noise department. The Aegis TI5 was certainly audible on the desk next to me, but not alarmingly so. Setting profiles using the gaming dial obviously affect fan speed noise and should be used effectively. More heat does indeed equal more performance loss, so it's best to remove it as effectively as possible. For testing, I use the extreme profile, which sets the fans to the most aggressive state. It's really begging for an overclock, but the performance profiles only affect fan speeds on the AIO, case and graphics card, which allows the max turbo frequencies of the CPU and boost clocks of the RTX 3080, which are achieved. Swiftly moving on to the price. I mentioned at the start of the video that the Aegis TI5 comes in at £4,300, making it by far the most substantial chunk of change the channel has also ever seen. Factor in pricing for all the components leaves around a thousand pounds on the table for the case alone. But once you factor in R&D and other associated manufacturing costs, as well as the fact that it is one of the most unique case designs on the planet, is a PC that works out of the box, 
and comes with a standard 24 month warranty, I feel like it justifies itself, though feel free to voice your opinions in the comments below. The MSI Meg Aegis TI5 walks away with players platinum and performance awards and a big big thank you to MSI for sending over the Meg Aegis TI5 in for today's review. Well that about wraps up the video, once again I've been Dave from Player TV. thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, hit like, consider subscribing, hit the bell icon while you're down there and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.